Finally, here are some of the most asked questions about bankruptcy, credit counseling, and your options. What is credit counseling? A company calling itself credit counselor usually must be licensed by a state financial regulator and be a not-for-profit organization under state law. The National Foundation for Credit Counseling has a list of certified credit counseling agencies that provide low-cost counseling. The charge is about $50 a month or less. They get a percentage of what you agree to pay creditors. If your balance is reduced through credit counseling, you may get a 1099 forgiveness of income form and have to pay taxes on the forgiven amount. If a credit counselor thinks they can help you, you enter a debt management program and send them money every month that they distribute to your creditors. This still affects your credit score, you are slow pay, and it doesn't work on lawsuits, garnishments, mortgage or vehicle arrears, tax and support debts, payday loans, and many other kinds of debts. Second question, which is better, a Chapter 13, Chapter 7, or credit counseling? Depends on your situation. Credit counseling can work if you have debts that they can handle, like a small amount of credit cards. The problem is that many other creditors, such as mortgages, vehicle loans, taxes, medical providers, debt buyers, payday loans, and finance companies will not negotiate or work with credit counseling. Handling only part of your debt with credit counseling leaves you to handle your other debt. If you have no other debt, it might work, but credit counseling is only budgeting and negotiating, and a private power does not have any power except to negotiate with credit cards and medical providers in most cases. So, A, a bankruptcy court can force your unsecured creditors to accept the payment plan. This is even the case when you propose to pay your unsecured creditors a small percentage of their claims. B. A bankruptcy court has the power to prevent your creditors from bringing suit against you and from trying to attach your property. C. Under a Chapter 13 plan, the court can discharge you from unpaid debts with exceptions such as DSOs, taxes, criminal fines upon the completion of your plan. In Chapter 7, you can discharge many debts in four months. And there are no tax consequences to bankruptcy discharge. With the debt settlement, you will get a 1099 for any debt forgiven and have to pay taxes on it. Third question, how do you find a competent bankruptcy attorney? Beware, not all attorneys know anything about bankruptcy and very few have expertise in Chapter 13. Chapter 13 cases require real skill and attention. All attorneys charge about the same price for Chapter 13 due to court-ordered flat fee arrangements, so you're not going to save money on one attorney compared to another. You can go to the bankruptcy court's website in your area and see the Chapter 13 court call, see who does a lot of them and who appears to be having success. Or better yet, ask your friends if they know someone who's had a successful Chapter 13 experience for a referral. Number four, will I lose anything by filing bankruptcy? Well, you will certainly lose your debt. The object of bankruptcy is to protect your assets and paycheck from creditors, so the short answer is you won't lose any property in a well-planned bankruptcy that you complete. You and your attorney should go over a list of your assets and determine if they are protected by exemptions from creditor attachment or liquidation. If you list your assets like house, car, pension, accounts, claims and causes of action, rights to receive money, and your attorney's opinion is that they are exempt from creditors and those exemptions are claimed in your bankruptcy, you should not lose anything. You will lose a so-called perfect credit rating if you have one, so that will affect your ability to get into debt again until you rebuild your finances. Most people who need debt relief are at their wit's end with bills, so who cares if your credit score goes from 590 to 540 for a while? Credit scores are sales tools for banks and creditors to scare you into paying them back, and even in the current situation, some people with perfect credit scores cannot get loans. So don't worry about that. Worry about your money.
Number five, can I get into debt again after I get out of debt? Sure. Depends upon your income and lenders wanting to lend. A good down payment helps a lot for houses and vehicles, but you can't file another Chapter 7 for eight years, so be careful. Try to save some money and borrow wisely. Chapter 13 is available immediately after Chapter 7 if you get into trouble again. Number six, how is credit score affected by credit counseling and bankruptcy? A credit score is something that a private company like Fair Isaac Corp, FICO, makes up to sell to lenders and others. They take your payment history, debt, how long you've had credit, and what types of credit, and score you as a credit risk. Recent studies show that credit scores are very strange. Even with all the foreclosures and job loss, the average credit score is about 680 when 750 is close to the perfect score of 800. So you may have a good credit score because you're overloaded with debt. Many people have good credit score when they have 80,000 in credit cards and only make 40,000 a year. A credit score does not take into account lack of income or ability to pay until you actually default. If you default, have a foreclosure, and stop paying so that you can consolidate, or file a personal bankruptcy, your credit score may drop. In some cases, it may actually improve if you keep paying your car or your mortgage on time, but eliminate other debt that was delinquent or that you could not keep paying on time. So, you can rebuild a credit score after bankruptcy or credit counseling. It's now illegal in many states to use credit reports or FICO scores in employment. Credit report information or credit score can be used by bill collectors, landlords, insurance companies, and when extending credit or collection, such as buying a house or car. It's also used to send you pre-approved credit applications. Number seven, how long does it take to rebuild my credit after a bankruptcy or credit counseling plan? Past due amounts and other information stays on a credit report forever in cases of credit over 50000 life insurance, and unpaid tax liens. Chapter 7 is reported for 10 years after date filed, Chapter 13 for 7 years after date completed or dismissed, but no longer than 10 years. Late payments stay on for 7 years. If you put debts into a credit counseling plan, those accounts will be delinquent or slow pay and show delinquent on your credit report for 7 years, even if you end up paying them. Next, what are the types of bankruptcies for individuals? Chapter 7 and 13. Farmers can use Chapter 12. Chapter 11 is rarely used for high income, so Chapter 7 bankruptcies will relieve you of credit cards, medical bills, payday loans, and other unsecured credit. Chapter 7 bankruptcy will eliminate your debt and allow you to keep your house if your equity doesn't exceed the exemptions. Chapter 13 bankruptcy is a court-approved repayment plan that mashes your debt, except for future mortgage payments on the residence, you have to maintain those, into one lower payment you can afford. A, it lasts no longer than 60 months. B, you pay the court trustee who pays the creditors. C, no collection action is permitted if you comply with your plan. And D, you can't have more than $1.3 million in secure debt and $323,000 in unsecured debt. E, you have to have regular income sufficient to meet your regular expenses and pay your Chapter 13 payment that your attorney will calculate. F. Chapter 13 allows you to pay debts like mortgage arrears, vehicles, support, and taxes in full while making less important creditors wait and take less. Chapter 13 bankruptcies to reorganize the bills and smash them into a low payment you can afford. Chapter 13 includes most of your debt gets you caught up back on your home and your car if you fell behind. Next question, can I keep my house and car if I file bankruptcy? Chapter 7 and 13 rules are designed to do exactly that. After you complete your course, your attorney can tell you the details. Every state allows some amount of housing and personal property to be exempt from credit or attachment. Next, is home ownership better than renting? Well, owning a home is the American dream, but it can be the American nightmare. 
Why? Home ownership is expensive, usually way more expensive than renting. Insurance, upkeep, repairs, and interest are costs that renters just don't have. There are advantages to owning a home, such as living in a school district where it's not easy to rent, but there are a lot of expenses you have to think about in owning a house. If you own a home now, you should have as little other debt as possible. If your goal is to save the home you have, Chapter 13 will stop a foreclosure and allow you to pay past due mortgage payments and installments. Credit counseling cannot, and neither can Chapter 7. If you already have a house, either Chapter 13 or 7 may help you keep your house by getting rid of other debt, curing past due mortgage payments, stopping foreclosure, preventing wage garnishment, and possibly even getting rid of second mortgages, judgment liens, and tax liens. Bankruptcy can help you get rid of debt so you can save for a down payment on a house, since you may be able to start saving for the future. And you can buy a house after bankruptcy. You should immediately run, not walk, to a competent bankruptcy attorney if you are facing foreclosure lawsuits, falling behind in your real estate taxes, or just find it impossible to pay the expenses associated with a house payment if your vehicle payments are too high, your income has been cut out, or you have other debt. Only Chapter 13 or a state court order can force a lender to stop foreclosure and accept a repayment plan. What if you don't want your house? Do not abandon it and walk away. If your home is worth less than you owe, it's unlikely that a broker will be able to convince your lender to take less than you owe. So a short sale where the lender agrees to take a loss is not only unlikely, but if it does happen, it's an awful lot of trouble. Stay in the house even without paying the mortgage until the lender sells it and tells you to move. You may also apply for loan modification programs in or out of bankruptcy or credit counseling. And a lot of mortgage companies will send your bankruptcy attorney a loan modification when you file Chapter 7 or 13. Bankruptcy, with or without a reaffirmation or payment on a mortgage, does not prevent a short sale, refinancing, or loan modification. Some banks like to blame a bankruptcy filing for almost anything, including bad weather or your favorite ball team lost the big game. Bankruptcy filing means you're controlling your debt, usually has nothing to do with your ability to sell, refinance, or modify your loan. In fact, it should help you, but don't expect your lender to be fair with you. Certainly, if you cannot afford your house, it's not a bad idea to file bankruptcy instead of giving your mortgage payments to your credit cards. Some people think they'll have good pay, good credit if they stop, you know, paying their mortgage and they pay off their credit cards with the money and then abandon their home. That's just dumb. So, proper budgeting or elimination of your debt under Chapter 7 or 13 can help you save up for a down payment or keep the home you already have. Even if you simply cannot pay your mortgage, do not walk away from your home. You can usually stay there for free until a sheriff's sale occurs. You may be able to negotiate or even buy it back after you file bankruptcy. Or refinance or modify the mortgage. The value may go up again, especially if your mortgage payment is reasonable and you have kids. You don't want to lose the house if you don't have to. So investigate how the bankruptcy laws in Chapter 7 or 13 may be able to help you get or keep a house.